Okay, so this is a little video in response to a post I put on my community a little while back. Um, there seems to be some people out there who comes across my channel and they'll ask me from time to time uh, which front ends do I prefer. So, uh, you know, sure, I release a lot of videos for Retro Bat, but is that really my favourite front end? And it's also going to be a bit of feedback uh, for people watching this video and my subscribers uh, to walk you through each one of them and really tell you which one is the best. So I've selected a few of uh, my preferred front ends in this video. And yeah, I'm going to just go through them bit by bit. So uh, check this video out. Okay, so if you like today's video, just hit notifications if you've not already done it and press subscribe. I'm always releasing new retro emulation content and I've got plenty more to come. So first off today, we're starting with Launchbox. Uh, so I'm going to just give you a quick run through what Launchbox is. It pretty much runs on Windows and a few other platforms as we can see we got Android here. And yeah, you can actually download this on your phone as well. So it's multi-purpose, um, but allegedly you can download this one on the Google Play app. Uh, so you have to use your phone to actually download this here. Uh, anyways, so Launchbox is a great system um, up until we get to Big Box, and then you've got to pay for that privilege. Uh, whereas other front-end systems in this list are going to be free. Uh, some people swear by Launchbox. It's a little bit tricky for new people to front-end systems. Um, you know, a lot of the time with Launchbox, you're going to need to link things up, link emulators up, and this and that, you know. So Launchbox is a great system if you're prepared to pay for Big Box. It's very good. But like I say, it's pretty tricky for people starting out with front-end emulation. That's no question about it. Uh, so you can start off with Launchbox by using RetroArch, but there's certain systems that RetroArch doesn't cover, or if it does cover it, then it's not too easy to work with Launchbox and RetroArch at the same time. So I thought I'd start this one off because from time to time I do release videos on um, Launchbox and yeah so launch box i would probably give uh, for beginners um i'd probably suggest another one in this video but we're going to get to that at the end of this video so anyway that's launch box down and obviously i've got plenty of tutorials in my playlist for launch box at this point and i'm going to be releasing some more but give launch box out but like i say just be prepared it's not necessarily the easiest system to get into uh, so just be prepared for a bit of a struggle if you're new to front-end systems. Next up on my list, I'm looking at RetroArch. Uh, so RetroArch is kind of like the bare bones. It's a bit of a no-frills uh, emulation system where you can download what's called cores. And cores are kind of like smaller versions, I suppose, of emulators. So uh, cores work with RetroArch and there's plenty of cores to use, uh, which comprises of many different systems. Uh, RetroArch is used on a number of different platforms from PlayStation to even Switch to Android to Linux. So uh, RetroArch is a very good system to use if you're looking at putting it on different platforms and it runs just fine on Windows too. Uh, the problem is with RetroArch is that uh, I think even the most seasoned uh, emulation fans out there sometimes find it a little bit tricky to put things together if gameplay isn't right. There's a hell of a lot of settings in RetroArch and it's definitely, definitely, definitely not for the faint-hearted, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, like I say, there's a hell of a lot of settings in RetroArch. And the truth is, RetroWatch is used as the skeleton behind most front-end systems. So at some point, you will run across it. But nevertheless, using RetroWatch is a standalone system rather than having it in the background of something, say, like Batacera or RetroBat. It's tricky stuff. Um, one pro I would give with RetroWatch is that if you was to use this alone, it's going to be more lightweight rather than having it running as a skeleton in the background. So obviously when you're playing a game, if you've got more processes going on in the background, then 
games and frame rates are going to struggle. So in that sense, Retro Watch alone isn't a bad alternative, especially if you're looking at running higher end games. So Retro Watch definitely would recommend this one for beginners. Uh, it's very advanced as, as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, bits and pieces for this one. And next up, like I said at the beginning of my video, we've got a lot of video content on just Jamie 4 Retrobat. Um, it's one of my favourite systems. I'm not sure if it's actually the favourite system that I play around with. Uh, but let me tell you about Retrobat. If you're new to Retrobat, it's a very easy, or I perceive as very easy system, which runs Retrowarch in the background, like I just said, on Retrowarch. Acts like a skeleton. With Retrobat, there's a lot going on in it and it's absolutely free so you don't need to pay a subscription you don't need to go to any patreon although the developers of retrobat do recommend giving them a few pounds or a few dollars uh, just for a little contribution for the hard work and efforts they put into the program so it's a very good program and aesthetically it's beautiful it covers around i'm going to say around a hundred different consoles uh maybe a little more uh, so Retrobat, I think for beginners, it's a really easy alternative, but having said that, if you want to go into the more obscure systems, things like Techno Parrot or Virtual Pinball systems, uh, things can get complicated if you're a beginner very quickly. So with Retrobat, obviously this is a Windows front end and it's only for Windows. Uh, do I recommend Retrobat? Yes, I really do recommend Retrobat. It is good. Okay, next up, something I've covered a few times now on my channel. We got Batacera, and we're currently on Batacera Linux 37. Uh, the reason it's called Batacera Linux is that it's actually based on a Linux operating system. So, very similar to Retrobat, uh, Batacera needs to be flashed onto something like a USB drive, like I've covered on my channels before. But in essence, Batacera runs very similar to Retrobat. So, Roughly, it's got the same amount of systems on it, minus a couple that Batacera doesn't cater for. Uh, Techno Parrot, as a recording this video, is one of the systems that you won't find on Batacera. So, I'm not sure right now, recording this video, if it's technically possible to run Techno Parrot, but I looked the other day and it couldn't do it. But having said that, Batacera is another free distribution and it's a very good front end system. Uh, if you want an arcade system, then something like Batacera, flashing the software to a USB drive and plugging it into an old PC is a very good way to go with getting an arcade system up and running. Um, I would recommend Batacera. It's not particularly hard to get into. Uh, once you get to grips with booting it up and perhaps entering BIOS or however you do it, it's something you get into very easily. And like I say, it's got a good compatibility with many systems and it's free, so it's a very good system to use. Okay, so next up we have got Play Night. So this is one I briefly touched up on on my channel and Play Night is essentially bit of a clone of Launchbox. Uh, with Play Night, it's nice as it looks once it's set up. It can get complicated. It's a lot like Launchbox. You need to link up emulators and put them into place, uh, put directories into place, that type of thing. Uh, it's like I say, very similar to Launchbox in that respect. So Play Night is absolutely free. The only thing it's actually missing is an addition of something like Big Box. So if you were to look at something like Play Night at first glance, you would assume it was Launchbox, but that's the only feature it's missing is that aesthetic that Big Box has to offer in Launchbox. Uh, Play Night is for Windows and it's a fairly good front end system. I've got no faults with it and I think personally it should be more widely talked about, uh, but we got other front end systems which seem more popular. So. If you've not actually checked out Play Night, check it out. Like I say, it's not necessarily for beginners. As I said in my launch box part just a minute ago, it's um, it can get complicated. So um, there is Play Night out there and it's absolutely free as well. Just be prepared not to have that nice look like something like Big Box would have. 
Okay, and it's a front end that I don't cover on my channel as of yet, but this is RetroPie. So RetroPie is probably one of the most popular front end systems out there on the market. It's absolutely free and it runs on a few different platforms nowadays. Uh, traditionally, this was running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, today, you can run this on Linux and you can even make a bootable USB drive with this to boot straight into it rather than going through Linux operating systems first. Uh, it can even run on Odroid. So again, the backbone with RetroPie is RetroArch. It's got a very nice look to it as well. So almost RetroBat in essence with that style and you can download multitude of themes for RetroPie. It covers a vast range of different systems from home consoles to computers. And there's a lot there and it's also got emulation station running in the background of it as well. It's a, I would say it's a beginner's type of front end. Uh, it's just a simple case really of just flashing the image what you can download from the website onto a SD card or even a USB device in some cases and just literally using its ROMs manager or even configuring it to read from an external drive with your games on it. And it really is that simple. Uh, things can get complicated it's very quickly though with RetroPie. You'll have to enter what's known as a terminal. So for updates, that type of thing, it's going to take us into a very old school 1980s looking terminal where you've got entering Linux commands. So in some respects, RetroPie is very good for beginners. But like I say, I do stress it gets very complex very quickly if you want to experiment with it. Uh, we also got a lot of different options on RetroPie for things like enhancing visuals, that type of thing. And it's very interesting, it's very experimental. And it's a decent all round platform to play your old games on. So uh, consider RetroPie, but bear in mind uh, Linux commands aren't as simple as they might sound. So things get very tricky very easily with RetroPie. And this is going to be a new system to uh, people out there. You've likely not heard of this one. I came across Retro Virtual Machine a couple of months ago. When at the time when I found it, I made a setup guide on it. I was really impressed with it. So Retro Virtual Machine mainly covers 8-bit microcomputers, but it also supports Sega Master System and the Sega SG-1000. Uh, MSX is also supported, and it comes with emulators already pre-installed when you download it. So what it does is pretty much gives you the full aesthetic of an old school looking TV, which is known as a filter or a scaler or whatever. But the beauty of Retro Virtual Machine is that it actually shows you a cassette tape and the reel of it actually loads when you press play on it. And it really looks really convincing. So a Retro Virtual Machine is not actually that difficult to use. Um, it keeps getting improved every month or so, and it's a really nice looking front end for sure. It doesn't cover everything else, which uh, most in this list does, but it's strictly there for really those micro 8-bit computers of the 80s. Uh, so like I was saying, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, ZX Spectrum, and the MSX-1. Uh, it's also compatible with Mac OS and also on Linux as well. So if you want a little play around with Retro Virtual Machine and you're not too interested in the console such as Nintendo, PC Engine or Sega, then Retro Virtual Machine is pretty much getting you straight in there. And again, it's absolutely free and it's very simple to use. So definitely check this one out. Okay, and finally, I'm talking about Recall Box. So, Recall Box, um, same sort of principles as a Batacera, really. So, you flash Recall Box onto, say, SD card or USB device, and you boot it up with your system. So, uh, Recall Box, I did a little setup guide a little while back. And truth be told, when I was attempting to play PlayStation 2 with a fairly good setup on my laptop, it did struggle to run PS2 games, even at native settings. Um, having said that, Recall Box has got a really nice looking aesthetic to it, um, really nice. Uh, would I recommend it for beginners? I probably would. It's probably as simplified to use as something like Retrobat or Batacera. It's just a case sometimes, it's just entering BIOS and configuring how to boot straight from the USB drive. 
Uh, in terms of adding your own games to it, that's another simple process as well. Everything's in there, just like Batacera in Retro Bat. So we got Retro Arch running in the background as what I call the skeleton. And it's a good system to use if you want a bootable USB drive, which takes you straight into a front end. Okay, so that's my little rundown on each front end system that I've catered for on my channel. So what I am going to say, and I hate saying this, but I started this video saying that Retrobat wasn't necessarily my favourite system. But I'm going to tell you now, yes it is. Uh, it's my favourite system because it's very easy to use and although it's got its parts in it where things become complicated, they're not actually that complicated when you've got guides and there's also tutorials and you've got a Retrobat forum to use as well which is in three different languages and of course there's an English section on that as well. Um, adding emulators to it is also a really good feature so it mainly runs on Retroarch uh, just like the other systems pretty much do which I've covered in this video but you can add emulators as well to this and they're tailored to work with Retrobat. So that's it, I hope I helped out some people out there who's been asking me over time about which front end is my favourite. I think it's probably inevitable a lot of you's going to realise that Retrobat was my favourite. So just comment below and tell me what you think is the best front end system. Is there anything I've missed? So until next time, stay retro.